Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this second Sunday of Easter and Trinity Church's House Church Online. We'll begin our worship today with a hymn, He is Risen, He is Risen. Tell it out with joyful voice. Let us sing now together. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that is today you would hearken to his voice. You will show me the path of life. 
Alleluia. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. You will show me the path of life. Alleluia. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. You will show me the path of life. Alleluia. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. You will show me the path of life. Alleluia. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. Alleluia. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. You will show me the path of life. Alleluia. A reading from the book of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you. As you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life, you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestors, David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, 
he knew that God had sworn with him an oath that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke to the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of all that of us are witnessed. The word of the Lord. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths. In the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from the first epistle of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials so that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples, See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. A reading from the Gospel of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the temple authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. 
When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I'd like to start off this morning with a confession. I am a secret admirer of Thomas. Now, not so secret, really. And I think he just might be the most misunderstood of the disciples. Why is it that we can't seem to even mention Thomas's name without labeling him Doubting Thomas? Maybe it's because I was almost born in Missouri. That's another whole story. The show me state. But I'm with Thomas. I would want to see the evidence too. And when he does see it, the first words out of his mouth are, my Lord and my God. Perhaps this is why Eastern Orthodox Christians refer to Thomas as the disciple who loved intensely. All the other disciples had already seen, but if they hadn't, perhaps they would have had the same reaction that Thomas did. I suspect they would have. Thomas is the one who is not afraid to ask the question when others are worried about whether they might look weak or faithless. He doesn't want to just follow along with a crowd while harboring his doubts. He speaks up and says what he's thinking, even if others might think him weak. Thomas is not gullible. He has a high appreciation for the facts. He's not likely to fall for something just because someone else tells him it's true. Now, those all strike me as very admirable qualities. And in some ways, Thomas embodies the ethos of our Anglican way of being Christians. At the time of the 16th century Reformation, there was a lot of debate going on about how do we know the truth? The church said, you know the truth because we tell you. It's all been handed down through the ecclesiastical councils and the tradition of the church. Protestants said, no, it's only the Bible, sola scriptura. That's the only way we know the truth. If the Bible says it, I believe it. And then along came an English theologian by the name of Richard Hooker, who dealt with the competing but complementary uses of Scripture, revelation, reason, and tradition. Hooker gave us our three-legged stool on which we base what we know to be the truth. Scripture, tradition, and reason. It has given our tradition a healthy appreciation for science and for the life of the mind. As we like to say, questions are welcome here. In our tradition, you'll never have to hear as the answer to a question, because the Bible says so, or because the church's doctrine teaches us so. We are invited into conversation with scripture and tradition, and yes, also with the use of our minds. What about what Jesus, though, said to Thomas? Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, we just sometimes, sometimes we hear this uh, statement of Jesus, 
as a scold to, to Thomas. But I think it's really something else. Think about this for just a minute. John's Gospel was written sometime probably between 90 and 100 AD. And it was a time when most of the people who had actually known Jesus in the flesh had died by this time. And there was a growing concern that once they were all gone, there would not be the same kind of immediate connection to Jesus. No more people to say to the Christian community, I remember when Jesus sat with us on the hillside and taught us. So when the readers of John's Gospel heard these words, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe, it was a mark of affirmation. It was a consolation that they were just as valid in their belief as those who had actually seen him. It is a message to later generations of Christians who had not themselves seen Jesus, but who yet believed. It's less an indictment of Thomas and more a commendation of all those, including you and me, who had never seen Jesus in the flesh, who yet believed. And then there is the meaning of the word believe in all of this. It doesn't mean, as we often think it must, that we have resolved all of the empirical details and that we know for a fact as a propositional truth that it can verifiably be asserted that such and such is true. The word for believe in the Greek New Testament is more nuanced than that. Pistuo, to think to be true, to be persuaded of, to credit or to place one's confidence in. So persuaded was Thomas that he spent his life sharing the good news of Jesus with the world, traveling to Persia and as far as southern India, planting churches and creating a community centered on the one who had embodied God's love incarnate in the flesh and had shown that even death itself could not keep this love buried. Believing isn't just about an intellectual assent to certain propositional truths about Jesus. It is putting our trust and our confidence in him, staking our lives and our purpose on him and following in his way. The 12th century philosopher and theologian Peter Abelard said this. He said, by doubting, we come to inquiry. By inquiry, we come to truth. Questions form the scaffolding from which our faith is built. The mystical poet Rainer Maria Rilke in his Letters on Love says this. He says, be patient toward all that is unsolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves like locked rooms and like books that are now written in a very foreign tongue. Do not now seek the answers which cannot be given you because you would not be able to live them. And the point is to live everything Live the questions now. Perhaps you will then gradually, without noticing it, live along some distant day into the answer. There are many questions on our hearts right now. Why must, why, why must we go through this global pandemic? When will it all end? What will life be like when it's all over? We may not know all these answers now, but to love the questions also invites us to imagine what might yet be. What can we learn from this experience? What will we do differently when we have come through it? How are we to live together and what kind of society are we to become in light of these terrible events? We are in a Thomas moment. The facts matter, and yes, of course, we want to know them. We must use our minds to question in our search for the truth, to be persuaded, and to be assured that what we place our confidence in is, in fact, secure. And then, like Thomas, to love intensely with all of our heart, mind, soul, and spirit. And now let us join together in an affirmation of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, Grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
I invite you at this time to make our intercessions and thanksgivings to God. Let us pray. I invite your prayers at this time for all who are on our parish prayer list, especially Julie, Frank, Tom, Jean, Nancy, Marion, Mary Grace, Ben, Carol, Lynn, Jean Ann, Robin, and any others we wish to name at this time. Let us also pray for our leaders in this time of great difficulty and challenge, praying for their wisdom and courage to do what is needed. Let us pray also for all health care workers and researchers, all who are sick and all who are dealing with the economic effects of job losses. Let us also pray for the women of Wheel now in isolation at Trinity and all who are homeless on our streets. Let us pray for all who are lonely and isolated and for other needs that are on our hearts at this time. Let us pray for those who have died, remembering especially Don and others we name at this time. And let us also offer our thanksgivings for the blessings of our lives. And today we give special thanks today for all those who have recovered from COVID-19, Deacon Brent, Gwen's dear friend, Johnette, Linda, and Adam, and any other things you'd like to give thanks for this day. And together, let us pray the general thanksgiving. <clears throat> Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us uh, sing together our closing hymn, number 205, Good Christians All Rejoice and Sing.